The warrior says, a storm is coming. And the warrior whispers back, I am the storm. Good evening, Mr. Lopez. I would like to congratulate you on your last mission. The intel you brought from our agents is now in safe hands, and sanitation has arrived on the scene. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to now rank all six of the Mission Impossible films. Fail this mission in any way, and the Secretary will disavow any knowledge of your actions. Good luck. This message will self-destruct in five seconds. Hello YouTubers, today I'm going to rank my favorite Mission Impossible films. That's right, all six films, including Fallout, from my least favorite to most favorite. Now I've been a fan of the Mission Impossible series ever since I was seven years old. I remember seeing the original film on VHS, yes, the one that had the Star Trek First Contact teaser on it. Ever since then, I played the games, listened to the soundtracks, and I own all the films on Blu-ray. I recently just saw Mission Impossible Fallout, and I had to ponder my ranking of the films. Mission Impossible is that rare franchise where I'm really not disappointed or hate any of them, really. They're all good in their own ways. Some, of course, are better than other Mission Impossibles, but they're all very enjoyable, entertaining films. So, starting with my least favorite at number 6 would be MI2 from 2000. Mission Impossible 2 is directed by John Woo. Of course, he brings his dual-wielding gun action and doves to the film. This is a shoot-first, ask-questions-later type of Ethan Hunt. He's very different than the one in the first film. He's the adrenaline junkie Ethan Hunt. We see it from that glorious opening of him climbing a mountain. From then on, you know, this is a very different type of Mission Impossible. I also love the introduction of Sean Ambrose, played by Dugray Scott. I love it when you think he's Tom Cruise and he's talking to that guy. You keep calling me Dimitri. You really shouldn't. And of course, we have Thandie Newton as Naya. They try to personalize Ethan Hunt with this romance. It kind of comes across like a 007 type of film. Goldeneye and Siphon Filter with Mission Impossible and that early 2000s type of action. Despite its slow moments, it is a bit different. The way I describe it, it may not be the best Mission Impossible film, but it's a good action film. And that's how you have to look at it. This feels very different from the other Mission Impossible films. But by itself, it's a solid, solid action movie. Who could forget the part with the motorcycle chase? Yeah, everything in this film is worth it for that motorcycle chase. Probably the best motorcycle chase scene, along with Matrix Reloaded. I love the action in this. Despite it being really ludicrous in parts, especially the motorcycle joust. Ooh! I love the knife to the eye, and who could forget the soundtrack? Limp Biscuits, take a look around. I love Hans Zimmer's rendition of that, the rock Mission Impossible theme. I also love I Disappear by Metallica, the only Metallica song made specifically for a film. Overall, this may not be the best Mission Impossible, but it's still a fun time, and I love it. It's an enjoyable film, but it's not as good as the other films. And my number five spot is Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. I really like this film, but I'm not in the camp of loving it like everyone else does. What holds it back for me is the humor, the weak villain, and I'm just not a fan of Jeremy Renner's Brandt. I'm not a fan of Brandt. He's an annoying, annoying character. I do love that part, though, where he tells Ethan Hunt on the Burj Khalif, there's not enough rope, and Ethan Hunt's just like, no shit! I love that moment. And speaking of the Burj Khalifa climb, that's probably the best stunt since the first film. He did that for real. They shot it in IMAX. Brad Bird brought a lot of energy to this franchise with this installment. It feels fresh. It feels new. It has style. He brought the amount of energy from his animated films onto live action. I also love how it's a team dynamic. It feels closer to its television series 
roots, along with some of the structure from the original film with certain characters. I like how they dealt with another organization called Cobalt. Even though the villain was weak, I do like the deleted scenes and his motivations in those scenes. I really feel like he could have been fleshed out more. But he was a tad disappointing after Philip Seymour Hoffman in Part 3. Ethan Hunt, of course, has long hair. And yeah, it's a pretty crazy story of them blowing up the Kremlin, getting set up, and basically having to initiate Ghost Protocol. The team does mess up, and stuff does happen, and that's great. They have to think on their feet, but at the same time, I'm like... How are you an IMF agent if you're this bad? Like, come on. But they do get the job done. I do like the cameos of Julia and Luther in it. It's just not among my favorites, but I do really enjoy this film, and I think it's one film that starts to get the formula right of Mission Impossible, especially in these later films. Above that at number four is MI3, Mission Impossible 3. This is J.J. Abrams' first feature film, and I love this. This course corrects the Mission Impossible franchise. And yeah, Tom Cruise has short hair again, and he's kind of like an older version of Ethan Hunt from the first film. But you could definitely tell the alias vibe this film has. I love it. Phyllis Sumer Hoffman is one of the best villains as Owen Davian, if not the best villain of the franchise still. So menacing. He's counting down, WHERE'S A RABBIT'S FOOT? WHERE THE HELL IS IT? He's like, I swear to God I'm gonna kill you. Such a great opening. They hook you in the opening of the movie. But I also love the relationship with Julia. We get to see more of a personal side of Ethan Hunt, his personal life. And we never really got to see that in previous films. He's retired and he has to come back. I love the stuff with Lindsay Ferris, Jonathan Rice Myers, Maggie Q, Bing Rames. The style of this is really well done. The action is there as well. That helicopter part, Shanghai, the bridge attack, that awesome scene where he's running and then boom! I love that scene. So many great moments in this installment, and it's definitely, definitely underrated. One of the best of the Mission Impossible films. That one scene where he's running, trying to find Julia, they did that in one take with a spider camera system. I love that. And we have the introduction of Simon Pegg as Benji, who would later on have a much larger role in this Mission Impossible universe. Overall, I really love Mission Impossible 3, and I think it gets a lot of flack. It's definitely one of the better ones, and I think J.J. Abrams should be thanked, because without this film, we would never have had Ghost Protocol, Rogue Nation, or even Fallout. This is a film that really resurrected Mission Impossible and course-corrected it to what it could be. And number three is Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Now, on the top three, these are all my favorites, and I had a hard time ranking them after seeing Fallout. I love Mission Impossible and Rogue Nation just a bit more, but I'm really kind of conflicted on this ranking. So at number three is Rogue Nation. It wasn't my number two in my previous list. I love Rogue Nation. Christopher McQuarrie does a wonderful job here. It's no wonder he became the first director to come back to do another installment. And Ethan Hunt fights the Syndicate, an organization from the television series. Yeah, this is awesome. It continues from everything that was set up in Ghost Protocol, and it comes back greater than ever. I love Ilsa Faust. Rebecca Ferguson as Ilsa Faust is like the best Bond girl that's never been in a Bond film. I love her character. Benji is more of a field agent than he was previously. We have Luther back, Brant, and then we have director Hunley played by Alec Baldwin. And then of course Sean Harris as Solomon Lane. This is the first time we'll see him in this series. I like it. Ethan Hunt has a mental foe that matches him equally mentally rather than physically, and he has to go after the Syndicate. And I love how their organization is set up of agents who fake their deaths are thought of to be dead, and that's something that's very original in that regard. I love that part with the record store at the beginning. Him going all die another day. The motorcycle chase, Marrakesh, oh, Casablanca. You have the water tank scene. He actually held his breath. Who could forget that plane scene at the beginning? Wow, wow. I just wish they kept it on the, that angle for a while where you actually see it go up all the way instead of cutting, but that's still a fantastic opening, and the intro is closer to the first movie. Yeah, Rogue Nation is one of the best films, and it's no wonder they continue straight from that film to Fallout. I love everything about this, and who could forget the third act with Benji and a bomb vest? Not the last time Ethan Hunt will have to make a choice for people he cares about deeply, so... Very, very well done in that sequence. I love the references to the box. And yeah, it springboards to Fallout. Overall, it's very well shot. That motorcycle scene, again, is probably better shot than MI2. And they top it in Fallout. So many great moments that makes it an entertaining spy film, a pure spy flick that's also true to the Mission Impossible vibe. I love Rogue Nation. 
Okay, so I've been conflicted since Fallout. I think there's parts of Rogue Nation and Mission Impossible that are better. But this is my ranking. At number two is now Mission Impossible. I still think this might be the best, not one of the best films. It's just that the other films have improved upon it so much. But I love the Hitchcockian vibe, the spy thriller espionage vibe that Brian De Palma said here. Ethan Hunt does not fire a gun once in this film. The only thing they do is they kind of alienate the television fans with Jim Phelps being a rogue agent. So that's a bit different, but I like John Voight's performance there. Jean Reno, Ving Rhames, his wife Claire. Emilio Estevez's cameo. Red light, green light. Asta lasagna. I love that. Who could forget the two best sequences? I still get really nervous. It's just an intense scene of silence where they're in the Langley vault getting the knock list and he's on the wires. That scene has been replicated so much in Hollywood movies. And then who could forget the helicopter chase with the terminal. London Terminus, you have the train railway sequence. Such a fantastic, fantastic scene. That explosion. Yeah. I love this movie. This movie has so much. Danny Elfman's iconic score. Vanessa Redgrave as Max, who would become a kind of an important part later in this new film. And yeah, it set up everything you know about Mission Impossible, but it still kind of had the vibe of the TV show, even though they made it about a one-man spy with Ethan Hunt. I still like it. It still had that vibe. It was post-Cold War. You go to Prague, you go to Langley, go to London. It had that kind of spy thriller vibe that I've only seen in a few films. Uh, more primarily The Saint, another uh, Paramount film with Val Kilmer. But yeah, I love Mission Impossible, and for a while, it was the best one for me. But, and my number one is Fallout. And like I said, I was kind of contemplating this list because I still think Mission Impossible and Rogue Nation are better overall than Fallout. But there's certain moments in Fallout that really go deep. And it's kind of a culmination. And it also breaks the style. It's not like, let's have an action set piece with a heist portion where you have to steal something or install something. No. This is really about a mission gone wrong and basically facing the consequences of your actions. And this is really a culmination of every decision made in Rogue Nation and Ethan Hunt's decisions in all the Mission Impossible films so far as an IMF agent. And I love that. They humanize Ethan Hunt. He's vulnerable in this, but also he has a morality complex. He can't sabotage or sacrifice his morality to get the mission done and it shows you his weakness he cares about people those close to him and sometimes that means saving one life while letting millions of other lives be in danger you know and upon thinking about it i think this might be the best mission impossible because i like the other ones overall but the sequences alone of action are well done but that's not what makes fallout what that's the icing on the cake what makes fallout is the story the characters the emotional weight of this film each character gets their own shining moments i love rebecca ferguson as elsa faust but then you have simon pegg as benji luther stickle ving rames gets more to do in this film than he has in the past couple of films solomon lane returns and we also have probably the most menacing villains since Philip Seymour Hoffman in 3 with the Apostles. They're pretty much like renegade agents from the Syndicate. And I love it. The stakes are high, it's threatening, but it also has nice homages to each entry that has come before. In many ways you're not expecting, so if you've seen all the Mission films, you're going to enjoy Fallout even more if you pick up on certain references and certain characters that they have added. Henry Cavill is great. I love the differences between him and Ethan Hunt and their methods of solving their goals and missions. And the action scenes are breathtaking. Among one of the best action set pieces with the helicopter chase, the motorcycle, the halo jump. That was kind of foreshadowed in Operation Serma, the video game. Like so much in this movie, but it's also one of those where you have to pay attention to and there's certain twists and turns like any other mission film. Above all, it doesn't feel like a Mission Impossible film, even though it is. But it's in a good way. It's not like MI2 or went too far. This feels like a thriller. If you took Mission Impossible out of it, it still would be a good film, a spy thriller. And it rivals the likes of the James Bond films. It really does. Tom Cruise gives his best performance as Ethan Hunt in this. And it has one of the most emotional, just nerve-wracking third acts of all the films that really kind of gets your heart going. And your investment is rewarded in this film. And because of that, I think it might be the best one. It's improved upon everything. There's action. Some people say it's too predictable or long. I agree it's kind of long, but that's just nitpicking. 
Like, come on, there's Marvel films with a whole bunch of jokes and stuff that are predictable. Every other franchise is predictable at this point. Mission Impossible has real characters with real stakes, and it feels like I'm actually watching a real film. And it's among the best mission yet. I'm going to have to rewatch it to see my ranking. I love one and Rogue Nation just a little bit more, but I think Fallout's the best, and I have come to love Fallout even more because of those moments. It's like one of those where I had a certain feeling about it when I saw it, but the more you think on it, the more you watch it, the more the little things in the movie start becoming bigger things, and they kind of resonate with you and stay with you after a while. It's one of those films that kind of stays with you after you've seen it. You start to think about it, and you're like, you know what, I really like this, I really like that. It's just a damn good film. And yeah, good luck topping this one. This is like the Skyfall of the Mission Impossible series. And yeah, if this is the last one, it's a grand finale. I love it. It's the best mission I've accepted yet with Fallout. And I have to say, I think it might be better than one in Rogue Nation. I know a lot of people might disagree, but like, just everything this film does is just so well done with the development and the characters and story. And plus the action, real action, is what makes it uh, go a step above the other films in my ranking. So that is my personal Mission Impossible ranking for this video. Yeah, I never thought I would see a day where Mission Impossible was dethroned and Fallout would come in, but it really is the best one. And yeah, that's rare to say for a sixth film. It's like, uh, I love Grand Theft Auto Vice City, but GTA V just knocks everything out of the water. I, I mean, I don't want to see any other movie this year. Mission Impossible Fallout was that good. And yeah, I can't wait to own it on Blu-ray, and it's among the best film. But that's the beauty of this film series. I love all of them. There's not one that's really disappointing to me. There's some that I like more than others, but they're all great films. And who could say that about other franchises? It's a very rare thing. So that's just my personal ranking. Even though I had certain feelings of Rogue Nation and Mission Impossible over Fallout, I think Fallout has now become my favorite. So let me know in the comments below, what are your favorite Mission Impossible films? Feel free to give your ranking from your least favorite to most favorite. Also, you can follow me on the Stardust app at Fred Film Fanatic. And yeah, here are some more missions you can accept on my channel. I'll be taking a break for a while, so I'll come back in August for a Young Gun's 30th anniversary retrospective. Till next time.